is channel 403 we bring it to you all uh, step by step here at the prince mangosutu regional stadium where in an hour's time or so uh, the official funeral will get underway one of the uh, program directors uh, of that funeral is minister lindiwe zulu the minister of social development minister uh, thank you so much for giving us of your time. I know you're very, very hectic today. Thank Just you. take us in, you know, the, into the background. How, how, how did the issue of Category 1 arise? Just summarize it for us because there's a lot of contestation since last Saturday about you know, who do you give such a funeral to, etc. Secondly, you can also go into the program and just give us big highlights of what, do, what we can expect between now and 2 o'clock. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. As it is, I am one of the program directors, co-directing, but I will be focused on the program that is government. Yes. The family and others will focus on my responsibility is to focus on the government uh, side. Mm. Category has to be declared, category one has to be mm. declared by the president. Mm. And the president has got uh, the powers to do so on the basis of an analysis of the person that he's declaring, what was the role of that person in yeah. society, in community, what was the role of that person in building communities. And I know that there's been a lot of issues that have come up, controversies mm. here and there. I think what is important here is as a nation we are growing and as mm. a nation we've gone through a lot of pain yeah. of things that have happened to us as a nation before and this is the time as my grandfather would say death can either bring peace or it can declare a war yeah. and in this case death has come but it must be death that is declaring peace among ourselves at a political level at all levels we will have to celebrate that that needs to be celebrated we will have to deal with other issues that other people are are concerned about and we must not undermine the concerns that other people raise in terms of what you've just said minister you then think it was it was a good thing or a right thing for the president to declare this funeral a special official funeral category one. absolutely it was right for the president because i think he was taking himself way back to the times of negotiations, way back to the drafting of the constitution, way back to the formation of the institutions of governance, such as parliament and the rest, and therefore the role that was played by Umdwana Mangosutu Buteles in that space. I yes. saw a comment made in this past week by South Africans, person saying in the 80s when uh, Matane Lassi Ramaphosa was the Secretary General of the National Union of Mine Workers. Uh, Prince Mangos stood telling him because they started a rival uh, trade union which were pitted against, against. each other. Mm. Is the spirit now saying, the spirit of, of this occasion, is it saying to you as people who are in government and the ANC leaders to say, we've been through that pain and suffering, maybe mm. this is a moment for us to reflect and begin to put that behind in a real way and start to heal? Absolutely. The healing is never a, an event. Healing is a process. And that process will have to make all of us as South Africans to unite towards the future. Yes, we must not ignore the past, but we must look towards the future. When Nelson Mandela, the late president, said never and never again, he wasn't meaning for us to deal with it at that time. He was saying never and never again, which therefore means all steps that we take henceforth must work towards the never and never again. What is your, from a political point of view, what is your own, your own view about how the, the funeral has been, in a sense, uh, for lack of a better word, capitalized by all political formations? Suddenly, you know, nobody is willing to uh, even go and dissect right, uh, what, what could have been the good and the bad so that you can come to a truth and reconciliation because the truth and reconciliation commission for example i say if you don't depart from the truth and you if you don't couple with this justice you are going to have a situation like we have where it's 30 years now you still talk about reconciliation or something that happened 30 years ago and and the prince even passed away without that happening your you know, just political assessment of this because i know there's been a lot of contestation about it and maybe we don't want to have enough time today to deal with that but it will be good to hear just hear what your perspective is yes as i represent the african national congress yeah. Um, but here I'm representing government, which is yeah. a government of the African National Congress. Yes. Um, the bottom line is that the African National Congress itself is the one that is calling for peace. 
is the one that is calling for us to be sober in all our analysis, is the one that is saying, yes, we cannot ignore the past mm. because there are pe people who sit in pain in many quarters and they feel there was no justice uh, for them. That being the case, it's important for us to not allow this so much of the political fights yeah. that might end up taking us back instead of taking us um, yeah. uh, forward. Also, as we know, we, have a, we are a nation that has gone out through a lot of violence. Mm. What this that people are talking about, the violence that happened then, the healing is going, that's why I'm saying healing is never an event. Yes, healing a is a process, process, but we should work towards it. You have and to take practical steps. Yes, we have to take practical steps and we have to listen to those who are still in pain yes. so that they can also begin to feel that uh, their, their pain is being shared and their pain is being felt. And whatever we need to do to help them also heal in the process, this country needs peace, this country needs a moving forward, this country needs a nation that is united towards building it to the future. Yeah. I have no recollection of who was who in this so-called three aside, six aside, five aside here, but I think Dr. Zulukiza was one of those that the ANC was saying, come, let's help with the IP in KwaZulu-Natal yes. to reconcile. Yes. One of the wishes we are told of the late Prince Mangos Lutel is what, at least before he died, he had two issues. One was the Zulu royal family, other one, one was, was this reconciliation with the ANC. Yeah. Do you see that happening? going forward after this funeral as part of trying to work towards this different peaceful future? We don't have a choice because if we are a people that are going to sit in there and keep on steering ourselves mm -hmm. towards either violence, towards no peace, then we don't have a choice. The choice that we have, because by the way, he is sleeping now. He's resting now. Yeah. He's not seeing what's going to happen. And for us, on the other hand, being Umzulu, for us, we always believe Uguti Amadluzi as Begile. He will keep on watching on us and probably wishing, if he could, that we steer the country into a better future. Yes, we feel the pain. Yes, we are conscious of everything that happened. But it is important for us yeah. to, to build a nation of peace. Just a last shot. I, I mean, you are one of the most radical uh, ANC leaders. Right? And I can imagine that as a soft-spoken person, uh, you may have had some run-in. So just give us an anecdote. I'm sure you must have some run-in in these 30 years with him, one well, way or another. The, the fact is the run-in yeah. between me and him was complicated because <laughs> of my background and coming from the oh, home the and home, that, yeah. uh, coming from this home. Yeah. It was complicated because I was also angry from what I, we had we had experienced had seen yeah. i was one of those who were in the military camps we were seething angry as these things yes. were happening and we were like thinking how long is this gonna uh, go on like this but coming back home and also realizing that uh, the leadership across the board was calling for peace the yeah. leadership across the board was saying it's our time to start building our nation I softened uh, down, and for me, umkul uge in a way because umkul wam uge watu la gubo uge watala na bo. So umkul for me, na and um, I, I I had to soften down. But also from a from a from yeah. a traditional point of view, yeah. I also needed to show the respect that the others on my mm. family side are expecting me to do. Yeah. But that didn't mean I'm sitting there and I'm not conscious yes. of the history. Um, and I think it was his demeanor, it was his approach, it was his way of talking to us as yeah. like children yeah. that made us even soften our hearts much faster Absolutely. than we would have done. Quick highlights of today. Yes, um, today, today I think the most important thing is the respect that is being given uh, in, in a send-off. Uh, the unity, because it's not easy to take government, to take traditional, to take family, to take political party, mm. and be able to put all these things uh, There's together. There's a lot of intersectionality. There's a lot of it, especially because, you know, you have in the form of the IFP, 
you have an opposition party, opposition sure. to government and all. But I think the teams that have been working here, starting from the government side to the family side, to the family side, to the um, uh, traditional side, including the IFP side, I don't think we would have been here today if all of them didn't pick up on the fact that it's important for us mm. to give him a good send-off and it's important for us to let him re rest in peace. It's important for us to also remember that there's lots of lessons that need to be learned for the future. Yeah, the program uh, has got three parts, part yes. one. You, as you said when we started, yeah. you're yeah. going to be directing part two. Yes. And uh, that's a part two that will have uh, uh, two main speakers yes. uh, from government. Tell us yes. about them. Yes, the president is going to be, uh, he will do the eulogy, which we normally know, but the tribute by the Speaker of the National Assembly. This is going to be a very exciting one uh, because uh, he's been one of the pillars at the National Assembly in yes. terms of the development of the institution, mm. uh, in terms of developing of the rules, in terms of uh, sharing his own experience, because he was a very well-read man too. Mm. And we came in starting a government completely not knowing what starts where. And I can say that he is one of those people that really guided in terms of the building uh, of the institution. And of course, then the, the, the SANDF ceremonial elements of the chaplain general, that's what normally happens when a category has been declared. So um, a defense takes over and, and does everything. And of course, the other processes are family, um, the family service, Again, he was a very religious uh, person. Yes. So as you can see, there's the, um, the, there's the, the family service uh, that will take place and will end at, at, uh, at 12.35. And of course, there's the tribute on behalf of King Mrs. Zulu, Gazweli team. Yeah. That one is also be going to be very important, especially considering uh, the role that he has played in that area of work. Yeah, thank you. and then we know the king, according to the Muslim tradition, cannot attend a funeral, no, so he'll be represented here. Yes. Minister Lindy we have to let you go. Thank you. Thank very you for much. taking your time. You know you're busy, although.